Hey guys, I hope you're all keeping safe and well given the state of the world that we live in at the moment. So as a lot of you guys will know if you've read the description on one of my latest videos, The Shot Miss A1. In wake of the tragic murder of George Floyd, I did mention that I was gonna be donating all of the AdSense from that video to the George Floyd Memorial Fund, which is still going ahead. But I did also want to let you guys know, obviously because that video was pre-filmed, hence me not like, doing a little piece to camera like this. So as well as my Saturday video, I am also gonna be donating all of the ad revenue from this video to the George Floyd Memorial Fund as well. Enough is enough, to be quite honest. We're in 2020 and we are still discriminating people and killing people, innocent people, because of the amount of pigment that they have in their skin. Honestly, as an influencer, whatever the hell you wanna call me, if there was ever a time that I was gonna influence you guys, please let it be now. No matter how educated you think you are on the subject, please just check out some of the links down below. Sign petitions, donate if you can, take part in protests, but take part in them safely. Racism isn't just something that we see on social media. Racism isn't just something that you see in like big cities. It's literally happening every single day right in front of your eyes. Speak to the people around you in your life. Like even something as simple as Netflix, there are so many educational films that can teach you, your family, your friends, more about the struggles that black people go through on a daily basis. Encourage people around you to talk about it. Post on your social Social media, whether you've got 200,000 followers or 200. Please, just if there's one thing that you guys do today, just check out one of the links down below and educate yourself. And I'm not saying that as an attack at all. I'm gonna be doing the same. I'm gonna encourage everyone around me to do the same. We just need to educate ourselves more. So yeah, make sure you check out the links in the description box down below. I'll link things from like articles to petitions to places you can donate. I'll even list a few films as well. Just in whatever shape or form you see fit that you can help, just do what you can and support black lives because you can sit here and say that all lives matter, but all lives do not matter until black lives matter. Now, how the hell am I supposed to segue into makeup after that? So in today's video, I wanted to test out and celebrate a few of my favorite and also some new black owned makeup brands. So what do I have here? Obviously, obviously got some Fenty. We've got some Pat McGrath. That cost me a pretty penny. I've got some bits from the brand Uoma Beauty. Heard a lot of good things about this. So very excited for that. We've got Beauty Bakery. We've got some Colored Rain. I've got some palettes from Ace Beauty, which I am so excited to try out. And then I've also got some lashes from Isla in collaboration with Gary. So yeah, without further ado, let's get on into the video. Oh wait, yeah, I dyed my hair. As you can see, there was gonna be like a full video like later on in the week about it, um, but yeah. Got brown hair now, video coming soon, did it myself. <laughs> really into it. All right, so I've already gone ahead and moisturized my face. So I actually have two different foundations, honestly, because I couldn't decide between which one to actually try out. So I'm gonna put both on my face. The first one is this like, I'm excited about this, but I'm also like, this cost me a lot of money. I wanna say it was like supposed to be 60, 65 pounds or something. I think I got it for around about 50 pounds because I know I did get it in the sale on Selfridges. So yeah, probably one of the most expensive foundations I've ever actually tried. <laughs> so you better be good. Okay, the packaging is very nice. Like I really do appreciate this packaging here. And uh, the bottle is very heavy. Good, again, this is where all my money went. So I got this in the shade light medium. And then for the Uoma Beauty Foundation, this one is the, what's it even called? I thought it was called the You'd Best Believe It Foundation, but I'm not sure it is. That's what it's called, say what? It, it's the foundation anyway. And it says, stronger together, we are an empowered tribe. Literally, this could not be more relevant right now. Our race is human, our people are free, our language is color. Like, that literally couldn't be more relevant right now. So I got this in the shade Fair Lady T3N. I know one of these like wasn't 100% the right color. I was looking at it and I'd like to have gotten something that was like two shades lighter or darker. I can't remember. I had a glass of wine when I was doing this. So first of all, I'm gonna go in with the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Foundation. So let's just do a couple of little pumps of this. Oh, it's a lot more liquidy than I thought it was gonna be. All right, guys, you guys can see that there. So I'm gonna scoop some of that up on my sponge and hiya, here's my face. Let's pop this on. All right, so the color's a little bit too yellowy, but it's all right. It's weird, it's like weird in a good way, but it's it literally is skin-like. Like my skin doesn't look any different in texture as such. It just looks better. Okay, look, yeah, I'm not even gonna lie. I've been squeezing my face, leave me alone. Now that I've put it like 
here on my skin. Okay, that color's making me look a little bit Homer Simpson-y. That fully just looks like my skin, but as if like someone just kind of airbrushed it a little bit. But not airbrushed to an extent where it looks unnatural. It just looks really good. That looks really good. That literally does just look like my skin. Like there's my squeezed skin. It looks a lot worse on the, that camera. But yeah, there's the texture of my skin normally. And then you can barely see, apart from the fact that this one is a little bit more yellow, just a little bit. It just seems to blend into my skin like perfectly. So now I'm gonna go in with this guy here. So I'm gonna pop some of that on the back of my hand. Oh, this is very liquidy as well. This is supposed to be like that. Or, did, or am I supposed to shake it? I'm probably supposed to shake it, aren't I? So I'm just gonna pop that on here. Ooh, okay, this one is a bit, it's not thicker, like it's still a very kind of like lightweight consistency, but this one I'm instantly noticing a whole lot of coverage. Like, okay, really? Boom, gone. I actually think I could have done with less product than that, to be honest, because it's so full coverage that I'm actually having to like kind of blend out and tap off the excess there. So yeah, you really like seriously do not need a lot of this because it is so liquidy, you kind of feel like you might, but I could have done my full face with that. And again, it's, I'm not very good at color matching. As you can probably tell, the end result will look all right, but right now just, I'm sorry. A lot of the time I just go for the one that says beige and it usually kind of works. This one's got a nice fancy name called Fair Lady. I don't know what that means. The thing is though, and please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think a lot of people kind of like, maybe don't pay as much attention to black owned beauty brands because they think it's just gonna be like, only for say tan to deep dark skin tones. Like they've actually got a big shade range. They've got all like the pale pink and like light beige ones that we need. And then they've got the deeper ones that they need as well. So yeah, we're definitely recommend this foundation and the Pat McGrath one actually, they both look, they both actually look kind of similar. I'd say the Pat McGrath one is a bit more skin like and a little bit more dewy. But yeah, right now I really can't tell which one I prefer. I like how they both look to be honest. Okay, so now I once again have two different concealers. Again, one Pat McGrath, one Uoma Beauty. So this is the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Concealer. Again, the packaging for this, I really enjoy this packaging a lot. This. This is like, I don't know why I'm trying to prove it to you guys because you at home can't really tell like the weight of something, but this is very heavy. I could probably even, oh yeah. Yeah, good packaging there. So this one here was in the shade LM11. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pop that under my eyes, just like that, because I'm not sure how full coverage this is. Oh, very apparently. Hell yeah. That is stunning. That's stunning. That does not look like anything on my skin and I don't really understand, to be quite honest, because it's got good coverage. Yeah, it's got really good coverage. It just looks glowy and just, yeah, just so skin-like. I'm really into that. So now I have the Aroma Stay Woke Brightening Concealer in the shade Fair Lady T2. So this one looks a little bit lighter than the other one, but that's cool. And do a little bit of that. And then I'm just gonna blend all of that out again with my sponge. Again, this looks really skin-like. Oh, these, these both look really good. Then I'm just gonna go in with the Pat McGrath, oh, I've got a hair in my mouth. Then I'm gonna get back in with the Pat McGrath one purely because it's like a better color for spots and everything because otherwise the other one is a little bit too brightening. Yeah, I'm just gonna blend all of that out again with my sponge. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That coverage is so good. So now for powder, again, another super pricey product from Pat McGrath. This is a Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Setting Powder, and I got this in the shade Light One. This is probably one of the most expensive face powders I've ever tried, so I'm very excited to try it. And I'm just gonna start by setting my under eyes. So this is obviously the Pat McGrath side. Oh, you know what? That's smooth as hell. That's really smooth. And then I'll take this side here. 
Okay, so on first impressions, I do prefer this side, which I mean, I kind of should because it's obviously the skin fetish foundation, concealer and powder. So it's like, it all should work pretty well together. But I still really like how this looks with the Oerma concealer as well. So now I'm just gonna take a big fluffy brush and just set the rest of my base down. Oh my God, I really like this base. Like really like it. it all of it just looks so skin-like. It's like taking away the excess shine, but not making me super, super like blanked out. Like, I'm sorry, but my skin looks real good right now. So now of course I have a little bit of Fenty. So I'm gonna be trying out the new Cheeks Out Freestyle Cream Bronzer. So apparently you can use this over powder, which is why I did kind of like powder down my face first. What shade have I got here? I've got Butter Biscuit, which is number two. Packaging is obviously 10 out of 10, always is. I'm just gonna take my Iconic London brush. And I'm gonna pick some of this up. I'm not sure how pigmented it is or what. Okay, it actually looks quite sheer, which is good. You guys know I never use like cream bronzers or anything. Oh, that's actually a really good contouring shade. They are quite sheer, but in a good way because, I mean, if this wasn't sheer, if it was super pigmented, I would put that stripe on my face and it just wouldn't be a good look. Wait. Am I actually about to sit here and like a cream product? This does not happen, but it has really kind of like sculpted me out in comparison. Do you see? That actually covered over a few of my little spots there that I was digging at. That covered over them so nicely. There's nothing worse when you can cover up a spot, but then you powder it down or you put like bronzer and powder blusher and highlighter over the top of it and then it just makes it look crusty again. Like, okay, fair enough. I got rid of the redness in my spot, but now I've got this crusty thing on my face. But this, obviously, because it is a cream and it's kind of like, it's quite like an oily sort of cream texture, but it doesn't look oily on the skin. It's just gliding over it like it's nothing. But no, that looks really good on my skin. I thought it was a bit more natural, but actually now I'm looking at it. It's a good color. So now I'm gonna try it. This guy from Fenty, it is the Freestyle Cream Blush in the shade Petal Poppin. It's just like, a, let's face it, you all know this is coming. It's just a natural pink kind of shade. So I think what I'll actually do is just use the same brush that I was using before, just kind of brush off any bronzer there. And I'll just pick some of that up. Oh, that looks like, that kind of color there is a bit of me. And I'm going to dot that just above on my cheeks here. And again, I'll blend it out with my sponge in a second. Okay, if there was ever a person that was gonna get me into cream products, which I very, very rarely use, I mean, it was always gonna be Riri, am I right? Like that woman could literally influence me to just wear like, I don't know, Cat Pierce perfume. I'd be like, yeah, if, if Rihanna's doing it, I'll do it. That's actually really pretty. Now, the reason I don't normally like cream products is because I like the whole process of doing foundation, concealer, powder, blah, 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 blah. So it just kind of throws me off using a cream before powder and then just like, it's like, well, then do I powder down afterwards? I don't know, but this seems to be working really, really well just over top of the powder. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave it like that, but I really like how that looks. By the way, they're a bit janky, but can we appreciate the fact that I did these little V-tips on myself? Like this side isn't that impressive, but doing it with my left hand, I did that. So now for a little bit more oomph, more blusher. I think I might be able to use one of these as like a bronzer as well, we'll see. But this is the Saharan Blush Volume 2 palette from Juvia's. I'm so stoked about this because if you guys haven't tried Juvia's Place eyeshadow palettes, oh my God, they're literally like the most pigmented things ever. So yeah, this is what the blush palette looks like. So you've got some nice little blush tones there, but you've also got what looks to be kind of like a matte bronzer, or at least a bronzer for me. Let's try this shade here as well, Zoba. Cause this looks like a highlighter. Why do I turn into a creep with highlighters? Some of you are screenshotting the meme of me like this. It's true, I do turn into a little creep when I see a highlighter that I like. And I like this one. So first of all, I'm gonna take a tiny little bit of Yara here. Not too much, because I don't wanna like go crazy with the bronzer. But I think I might just pick up a little bit here, just to kind of warm that up there. Oh, that actually looks literally kind of like a tan. So then I'm gonna take a little bit of Lena here, which is like the bright pink blusher. So I really don't wanna add too much of this, because I'm, I don't normally like blusher that much, and I already have one on. 
So I'm just gonna tap that on top of my cheeks. So now before I go in and try another highlighter that I've been wanting to try it for a long time, I'm gonna go in with the Zoba one, which I mean, I guess like realistically it is more of like a blush topper, but I'm gonna use it as a highlighter. Okay, yeah, definitely more of a blush topper because it is a lot more subtle. Yeah, it's actually quite nice. Like not dramatic enough for me, but it's a nice product, I get it. So now I have another product from Juvia's. This is the Nubian Loose Highlighter in Nefertiti. That's like the shade name. Oh, yes. Right, I'm gonna take some of that on my brush. Okay, that's maybe a little bit too much even for me. Okay, let's see what you can do, bad boy. Do you guys hear my toe click then? It's a bit more goldy than I was expecting. Like maybe it's a little bit too dark for me, but that is quite nice. I was maybe expecting it to be a little bit more blinding, but I mean, it, again, it's still really, really pretty on the skin. Oh wait, I actually had another highlight from Juvia's. I can't help myself. I got the Heroin Glow One. Ooh, I like that packaging. Yeah, let's give it a shot. Obviously I know I've got a little bit on there already, but let's try it. That is literally going on my skin like butter. Again, it's probably a little bit too dark for me right now. I know I'll be able to get use out of it when I am a little bit more tanned, because this ain't even my final form. But the formula of that is really nice. I think I might prefer this one, actually. Just seems to be a little bit kind of more smooth on the skin, even though this side does have a bit more texture than this side. Yeah, I'm gonna take a bit more of that and pop that up here. So now I'll move on to brow products. So I've already gone ahead, although it doesn't look like it now because they've gone all dusty, but I did already put a little bit of soap through my brow. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and use the Brow Fro again from Uoma. But yeah, it's the Baby Hair Precision Brow Pencil and I got it in the shade 04. Ooh, nice skinny little pencil. So I'm just gonna quickly brush my brows up in place again. And let me just have a little swatch of the color. Ooh, that looks spot on. You know how I always say that micro pencils, like micro brow pencils are usually kind of the same. Like you could go to Primark and get one for like £1.50 and then you could go to like, and get one from ABH for like 20 quid and they'd kind of be on par. I can actually see like the difference between this brow pencil and some other ones because this is so, so fine. And it just creates really good brow strokes. I might even, I've got a little spot there, so I might even. Dee, 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 dee. Yay! Uh, uh, uh. This is a good brow pencil. Very good, very, very, very good. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with the setting spray. So this is the Fenty What It Do Makeup Refreshing Spray. I think this is one of their new launches, maybe, maybe not. Oh, it smells good. It smells like a nice perfume. And it's got a really good mister as well. So I'm just gonna... I literally had to look then because I wasn't sure if the mister was working because I actually couldn't feel anything going on my skin. That's a really good mister. Like, I'm not crazy about the packaging. Like, it's nice packaging, but I don't know how I feel about the really kind of squidgy bottle but I don't care because the mister on this is great. And the setting spray, like as for how my skin looks as soon as you apply it, it does look really good and super dewy, which is what I love, but not sparkly at all. Oh, I've got like concealer on my lips. It looks like a crusty butthole. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do my lips first. So what I have here is one of the Beauty Bakery lip whips in the shade I like to chai chai. I've used this before, but I haven't used it in a while. So yeah, I thought I'd just drag it out and use it again. From what I remember, this used to be so good and like the most long lasting liquid lipstick ever. Let's do this. Mm, I forgot about this wand. Cause it's, it's just so easy. Like it just basically does your lip for you. Just before it dries, you know the drill. A little bit of concealer, da, 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 da. nude it up. Okay, I haven't even done the eyes yet and I'm already really liking this look. So now I have three different palettes because honestly, like I already had these two and then I picked this one up recently. So the first one I have is the Ace Beauty Slice of Paradise palette, which looks like this. Yeah. I then have the Oceanic palette, again from Ace Beauty. Mm. 
Is this not me in a palette? I actually might just have to use that on my face today, to be honest. And then I also have the Coloured Rain Berry Cute Palette, which is a slightly smaller one, but it looks like that there. This shade here, Platinum Berry, looks really nice. Oh, it's like a gray kind of purple. Ooh. Ooh, what do I do? They all look so good. Oh, but this one here looks real good. Shall I just say screw it and go all out with this guy? I wasn't actually planning on doing anything overly dramatic today, but... Mm. Yeah, we're using this guy today, but I have tried Colored Rain eyeshadows in the past. And they're very good. I've not tried this palette out before at any of these little minis. But yeah, just a heads up, like their eyeshadows are insane. Ta-da! Say no more. All right, so now we're gonna go in with this guy here, the Oceanic palette. I just love it. I don't know whether to do green or blue, or blue or green. Let's swatch some. I mean, this shade here is mental. And then this shade here, Mykonos. Oh, I miss Mykonos. Mental. These look, it looks like a freaking mermaid palette. So first of all, I'm just gonna go ahead and pop some of the Pat McGrath concealer on my face or on my eyeballs, eyelid, whatever the hell you wanna call this piece of skin, you choose. Go on, name my eyelid in the comment section down below. Get the algorithm up with this whole ad revenue thing. Name my eyelid, do it. Eileen, that's a pretty good name if you ask me. No one did, but still. First of all, I'm gonna go in with the shades barley. So this guy here, I'm going to take that on a fluffy brush. I hope this is clean. I didn't really check. I'm just going to give it a little shake and I'm going to stamp that right in my crease. Oh, I like this color. You never really see too many colors like this in palettes or on eyeballs, to be quite honest. It's like a kind of gray, bluey, purpley, I don't really know what it is. It's just basically the color of my top, isn't it? Yeah, twinning. That has blended out really nicely because it hasn't over blended or anything around here. And it's not like I'm using like the thinnest brush or anything. So now I think I'm actually gonna go in with this shade down here called Lagoon. And stamp it there. Oh, you're pretty too. Oh my God. Kind of tempted to put a little bit of blue clam there as well, just using the same brush. I'm gonna pick that up on the sides. <gasps> Wait, let me swatch that, because that literally, that might be like one of the most blue eyeshadows I've ever seen. Like that's, that's blue. So yeah, I'm now just gonna stamp that, the blue clam shade, a little bit more into the center. That color is honestly, this palette, is great, to be quite honest. I'm, I know I'm kind of loving everything so far, but that is probably one of the most intense blue eyeshadows I've ever seen in my little life. Oh my God, I might, I'm actually kind of tempted to put it like all over. Yeah, I'm literally just gonna stamp that all over my lid. Honestly, that is nuts. That's so blue. So now I'm gonna go back in with the first brush that I was using, the big fluffy one, and just try to blend that out there. And if I need to, I'll go back in with a tiny bit more of barley. Just to kind of smooth those edges out. I actually don't even wanna to do too much to this, to be honest. I think I might take a little bit of Bora Bora. I wanna like load up my brush and then tap off the excess there. And I'm just gonna focus that on the inner corner and I'm gonna try not to mess this up because I feel like this could ruin it, but also make it look great. It made it look great. This is potentially a new favorite palette of mine for blues, because this is seriously like, this is covering all the blue bases, the blues, the greens, you got like the mattes, you got some crazy shimmers. I'm so into this. <laughs> Yeah, I think I might actually kind of leave it there for now. I'm gonna add like mascara and lashes and everything, but I think I might leave it there for now, just because I'm really into this blue and I feel like if I add too much, it might just kind of ruin it. But no, this palette, seriously, 10 out of 10. 
All right, guys, I'm not gonna lie, I effed up a little bit here. I was literally just about to reach for my mascara and then I remembered that the Pat McGrath one was out of stock on Selfridges and I was meant to buy another one, but I didn't. So yeah, my bad for that one, but I do, like I said, have Gary's lashes. So these are the Isla lashes in collaboration with Gary, the plastic boy. There's Gary, I love him, he's a sexy man. So yeah, be right back, I'm just gonna add some mascara. I'll put my lashes on and then I'll show you guys the finished look. All right, guys, so this is the finished look. I'm obsessed with it. I know this is like one of the first videos that I filmed with my brown hair, so I'm still like trying to get used to it with like different makeup looks and stuff, but I'm really into it. Honestly, I think I liked everything. Um, yeah, I liked everything. My favorites would probably have to be, I'm like scanning my table here. I really like the cream bronzer. Didn't think I would, like I thought it would be all right, like nice enough, but I actually really rate this. All of the base products were good. Both concealers, both foundations, the powder. The powder's really nice. The brow pencil was great. The highlighters were great. Maybe not like my go-to color as such because it is a little bit more yellowy, but stunning. Overall, 10 out of 10. Yeah, I literally liked everything. I liked it all a lot. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully I introduced you to a few different black owned brands that hopefully you guys will check out, which of course, Links down below. Like I said before, all of the ad revenue from this video is gonna be going to the George Floyd Memorial Fund as well as the video that I uploaded on Saturday. So if you haven't checked that one out as well, I'll leave a link to it down below. If you guys did enjoy this video, instead of giving me a thumbs up today, although that would be great, then please just make sure you click one of the links in the description box down below to check out some other resources. Subscribe if you want, but most importantly, please share this video as well to your friends, families, social media following, whatever, to get those donations up. But apart from that, that is it from me. I love you guys so, so much, each and every one of you, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.